Yes, I think absolutely. He's absolutely unique. His approach of the piano is really revolutionary because it's uh, like a singer. It's a new way of, of projecting the music and uh, he, his technical demands are very specific with a special cantabile legato on the right hand and accompaniment very fluent and very... and it's, um, it's really uh, challenging, especially on modern piano, which are very loud and Chopin uh, hated uh, loud sounds. He was, he was more in a kind of mezzo forte, maximum small forte on small pianos also. And for intimate uh, concerts, so it's also one thing the, the pianist has to think about. And uh, it's why it's so difficult nowadays on a, the big piano immediately sounds too much. Too much pedal, too much sound, too much percussion, too much everything, you know, for Chopin. So we have to, to imagine uh, how it was and try to create again on our new piano. That's the real challenge. And he composed only for piano, which is also a challenge. You know, uh, as like Wagner, for example, composed only operas and not a single note of piano for piano, Chopin never composed other things than piano piece, which is uh, kind of amazing and kind of unique. For me, he's the greatest composer with maybe Mozart and Beethoven. For me, for different reasons. But for me, they are the three of them have spe something very uh, special. M Mozart, I would say, kind of um, you know, uh, God music. You know, easy music. Everything uh, is fluent. Everything is natural, and everything comes immediately. Beethoven is the human composer. You know, but Chopin is the soul composer, the composer of the soul. You know, uh, the what. Uh, you know, what, what the human soul is about is Chopin. I, I had the incredible opportunity to work with um, Arthur Schnabel's son, Carl Ulrich Schnabel, who was uh, teaching in Como Lake in Italy. And uh, a long time, um, maybe um, 15 years ago, I was his pupil. And um, I had the chance to see Arthur Schnabel's score and to be involved in all his legacy as a stylish and a respect of the text and everything, you know, and that was uh, also the idea of the expression he could, um, he could possibly give with his piano of his time, like uh, Bechstein piano, for example. And, um, and we have now to create, as I was saying in my previous question, the previous question, uh, I, we have to create this sound, this particular sound, as well for Beethoven, which is between the historical instrument and the modern instrument. And it's the Schnabel time had this kind of piano, and we have to think about that, you know, and to remember this sound. And so I think also later I, wor I worked also with Leon Fleischer, who was the pupil of Schnabel as well. And all of this um, direction of style and, 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 and music um, was given to me, so I try to to keep the legacy alive somehow, if I may. Ah, that's a, a very good question. You know the famous word of the Chopinesque pianist Sanson François. He was a, one of the most incredible interpreter of Chopin music, and he was saying when when. A journalist asked him about Brahms. Why don't you play Brahms? I mean, Brahms is fabulous. And he said, just thinking about Brahms, I'm already tired and I have my, my arm hurts. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he just said that. And I don't have this feeling. I mean, the arm hurts sometimes because it's really demanding in terms of... I mean, his playing, his, his approach of, of, of uh, piano music is really uh, opposite, I would say, as the Chopin one. Uh, Brahms is full of chords. Uh, the rhythm is completely new in a sense. He, he broke the rhythm. The chords are broken as well. And uh, he put the piano in the middle of, of the orchestra. So opposite of Chopin. And as a French pianist, <laughs> I would say Brahms is one of my favorite composers. Yes, after Beethoven is the composer I recorded the most.
And this uh, second piano concerto I will perform um, is, um, you know, uh, I recorded it in uh, early uh, 2003 with uh, the LPO and Pavel Berglund, the famous Sibelius and Brahms player of uh, Finnish, Finnish conductor. And that was an incredible experience, of course, and I played it throughout the world many times, including with uh, Daniel Harding, you know, and uh, many, many other, uh, many other conductors, you know, and uh, so it's one of my favorite, I would say. I like it very much. Mm -hmm. <laughs>